Gravel? What sort of name is that? Okay, it probably sounds way better when an Italian says it, and I won't even try and butcher it with my Italian accent. I'll let you at home decide how it should be pronounced. But that is the name for the brand new Pinarello gravel bike that launched just a little while ago. Probably the least expected of all the new bikes launched in 2018. I had no idea, no expectation that Pinarello would launch a gravel bike. And that's because Pinarello, apart from a couple of hardtail mountain bikes, which aren't really much to get excited about, it's a pure road focused brand with all that heritage and history in road racing. Uh, won loads of Tour de France's, more in recent history than any other brand. So they're all about road racing and winning road races. So for them to come out of a gravel bike was a surprise really. But it goes to show how important and how big and how fast moving this whole gravel and adventure market is that a brand like Pinarello feels it can't afford to miss out on a slice of the action. And the gravel, or the gravel plus, is its answer to this um, growing movement. And what a bike, as well as the name, it's a radical looking bike, really distinctive bike. It's definitely a bike that will stand out in the crowd for sure. They've taken some of their learnings from the Dogma F10 and applied it to a gravel bike. So it's an aero gravel bike. It looks a bit like a 3T Explorer and a Pinarello Dogma F10 got together and this is the offspring. If not to everyone's taste, I'm sure it's gonna divide opinion throughout the internet and hopefully it looks better in the flesh. But reading some of the material, some of the tech specs from Pinarello, it sounds like all those curves and shapes are there for reasons. So as I mentioned, it's an aerodynamic gravel bike. And do you need aero on a gravel bike? Well, that depends. Aerodynamics and wind resistance is the biggest factor above about 12, 13 miles an hour. So that those sort of speeds, which are attainable on a gravel circuit, aerodynamics is a big factor. And with a lot of the new bike packing and long distance events that we're seeing, people really push themselves to the limits. Aerodynamics is obviously gonna be a factor in gravel races a lot more in the future. So a gravel bike, makes a lot of sense. It won't be for everyone for sure, but if you're racing and you're about performance, whether on gravel or dirt or road, then aerodynamics is definitely an area you want to explore. So a lot of the tube shapes, the radical shapes are there for aero, and they've taken the lessons from the Dogma F10, as I mentioned earlier. So your flat back profile, try and shield the water bottle from the um, airflow, full internal cave routing with a junction box hidden in the down tube, just to minimize drag. There's also a lot of tube shaping designed to provide more compliance. So the wavy fork is all about absorbing vibrations and shocks coming up through the front wheel into the handlebars. And it's the same at the back end as well. And there's a very asymmetric design to the rear triangle. That's something that Pinarello has done for many years and many other brands do the same. So you've got differently shaped and profiled uh, stays on one side of the bike compared to the other side. And that's to manage the forces coming from the chain set on one side where you're putting all your power through the bike and also a disc brake on the other side. And these forces all try and work against each other to try and twist the rear triangle. So Pinarello used different tube profiles and shapes to try and manage those loads and ensure that the frame tracks in the same direction and provides a nice balanced ride. Another detail and one that we've seen on quite a few gravel and adventure bikes. And I think Open Up might have been the pioneer of this movement when they launched the Up back in 2015, I think it was. So they dropped chain stay on the drive side. And the idea is basically to move, to drop the chain stay out of that crowded area behind the crank set where you had the front mech and the wide tire. So trying to package all those components in that area doesn't leave much space. Now there are two easier solutions. You can simply move the cranks apart, but then you um, have a wider pedaling stance, which isn't desirable. Or you can move the rear axle back and increase the wheelbase and move that tire out of that crowded area. But you don't want to increase the wheelbase too much because you ruin the handling. And they try to keep the rear end quite short. It's a full 20 millimeter chainstay, so it's not much longer than a, a race bike. So dropping the chainstay is their solution, a solution that a lot of our brands are using to ensure they keep the acuity factor how you want it, keep the short chain stays how you want it and make sure everything works. Naturally, it has disc brakes. Try and find me a gravel and adventure bike without disc brakes. Well, you won't find many because most gravel and adventure bikes are designed around disc brakes. And that's simply because disc brakes more easily allow a wire tire to be fit to a frame, not constrained by a rim brake uh, caliper. And because as we've seen in mountain biking for the last 10 or 15 years, Disc brakes provide really good performance off-road. 
They deal with a wide range of conditions. They're out of the way of the mud from muddy puddles and so on. Uh, they provide more stopping power and that's useful on very unpredictable, demanding terrain at high speed. And also when you're loading up a bike with bike packing bags or extra weight, you want more stopping power so you can stop more easy and in more control. So if disc brakes on a gravel and using the now commonplace 12 mm seraxle front and rear and flat mount calipers. They've routed all the cables and the brake hoses inside the frame so it's nice and uh, clean, keeps all the cables and hoses out of the mud as well. And also internal is the seat clamp. That's something we're seeing on a lot of road bikes and we're seeing on gravel bikes now as well. And it also allows a bit more seat posts extended out of the frame and that helps provide a bit more comfort because you've got more seat posts to deflect over bumps and so on. The frame is compatible with one by and two by and the pictures we've seen, the video we've seen shows uh, both bikes with a two by and a one by drivetrain. You can remove the front mech hanger if you're not using that. So that's something we've seen in a lot of gravel bikes really, one by and two by compatibility. And it provides options for whatever your demands are, whatever type of rider you are, so everyone's happy. The other thing to talk about is of course tire clearance and the gravel is designed around a maximum 42 mil wide tire on a 700c rim. That's in line with most other gravel and adventure bikes. And it will also take a 650b wheel set with up to a 2.1 inch mountain bike tire. So plenty of options for fitting any tire you want and the tire you fit to a bike like the gravel depends on the type of ride you are, the type of terrain you're riding and the ratio of off-road to road riding. So basically keeping everybody happy and it ticks all the boxes that we expect in a modern gravel and adventure bike. If you're liking the look of the new gravel, there will be two versions to choose from. There's the Gravel Plus, which is the high-end, most expensive version. It's used in the company's highest grade T1100 carbon fiber, the same as used on their Dogma F10. Now we haven't seen any prices yet, but we can expect it to be pretty pricey. I'm going to guess two and a half to three and a half K just for the frame set. And that Gravel Plus is only available as a frame set. So you build up yourself with your own components. Below that is the Gravel that uses a more affordable T700 carbon fiber, probably be a weight penalty or a few hundred grams that we usually see on these bikes with a lower grade carbon. Come out of the same mold as the Gravel Plus, the same tube profiles, just use a different carbon fiber to keep the price down a bit. So small weight penalty, but a big saving. Again, we don't know how much it's going to cost, but there will be full bills available with that bike so you can get a, an off-the-shelf bike ready to ride with a choice of wheel sizes. So I can't wait to see the prices and hopefully they're realistic and not astronomical as Pinarellos tend to be. So to wrap up, that's been the new Pinarello Gravel, probably the most unexpected new gravel bike launch this year. And my God, we've seen a lot of new gravel and adventure bikes launched this year being the hottest, fastest moving, fastest growing category of bike. And I think pretty much every manufacturer almost has a gravel bike in their range now. And to see a brand like Pinarello, as I mentioned, a purebred road race focused brand launching a gravel bike shows, I think, how important, how big the whole gravel movement is. It's more than a hype, it's more than a trend, it probably is here to stay. How big the gravel market is and how big it's likely to be in the future is anybody's guess. But with the likes of Pinarello getting involved, it's clear that there's a lot more to it. So the Gravel Plus and the regular Gravel is a distinctive, radical looking gravel bike. It's certainly not gonna shy away in a crowd. You're gonna see it. Its curves and tube profiles really help it to stand out. It's not gonna be a crowd pleaser. I'm sure it can be a Marmite bike. A lot of people are hating it as much as those people loving it. But I like what they've done. They seem to have some solid reason behind a lot of the tube shapes and profiles and I can't wait to see it in the flesh and hopefully get a first ride on it. And to make sure you don't miss that first ride, whenever it is, I don't know when the bike's available, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below the video so you don't miss that future uh, video, hopefully on the first ride of it soon. So um, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video if you have enjoyed watching it. And if you've got any questions on the bike, if you're loving it or hating it, let me know in the comment section below. As always, love to hear your thoughts on these bikes. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Ciao.